right, so now that you know and understand the relationships between price, risk, and return, we can go a little deeper and learn how to calculate stock returns. Just a quick recap though, recall that return refers to the amount of money that you make from your investment expressed in percentage terms. Let's see how we go about calculating the return then. Imagine that you buy stock in Facebook for $160 and sell it for $192.73. What is your profit and what is your return? Well, if you think about profit, profit shows you the amount of money that you earn from an investment uh, and it's expressed in dollars or pounds or whichever currency you're working with. The return shows you exactly the same information except that it's expressed in percentage terms. So in this example, to get the profit, we would start by the selling price, the amount uh, or the price at which we sold the stock for, uh, take away the purchase price, uh, that's the price at which we bought the stock for, and that gives you the profit. We can annotate the selling price as PT plus one and the purchase price as PT. So PT plus one means this is the price at time T plus one, and PT means that it's the price of the stock at time T, and T could be uh, whatever you like. So it could be the date uh, of purchase, or it could be the month of purchase, or it could be, I don't know, the quarter of purchase. It really depends on uh, the frequencies that you're working with. PT plus one in our case was $192.73, and PT was $160 take the difference between the two and you end up with a profit of $32.73. To get the return, all we need to do is express the same $32.73 in percentage terms. And we do that uh, by expressing it relative to the original investment of $160. What does that look like? Well, the return on a stock uh, is calculated as P at time T plus one minus P at time T divided by P at time T. Remember again that PT plus one is the selling price, PT is the purchase price, and then we're scaling the difference between the two by the original price or the purchase price to get the amount of money that you make expressed in percentage terms. So in this example, PT plus one is $192.73, PT is $160. Take the difference between the two and divide it by PT, which is $160. Because of the way the equation is written out, I can split it into two parts. So I can take $192.73 and divide that by 160, and then subtract $160 divided by $160. So I can rewrite this equation like so. You've got $192.73 divided by 160 minus one. The minus one is because we're taking 160 here and dividing it by 160, and anything divided by itself is always equal to one. So when you solve for this, you'll find that the return is 0 0.2046, which is the same as 20.46%. Now I know for some of you, the move from this step to here might not be uh, very clear. So let's just uh, look at it again, but working with uh, notations instead of numbers. So the return on a stock is PT plus one minus PT over PT. I can rewrite this as PT plus one over PT minus PT over PT, and anything divided by itself is always equal to one. And so this equation here can be rewritten like this. So you've got the price of time T plus one over the price of time T minus one. And that's pretty much it. So when you want to calculate the return on a stock, uh, the general equation can look like this. So the return on a stock J, J could be anything. It could be Facebook or Alphabet or Amazon or Netflix, whatever you like. Um, J is just a generic term or generic notation for any stock. So RJ refers to the return on a stock J and that is equal to the price at time T plus one minus the price at time T over the price at time T. And this is exactly the same as us saying it's PT plus one over PT minus one. So this symbol here just means that these two are equivalent. So you can calculate the return on a stock uh, using either formula and you'll end up at exactly the same result. All right, hopefully this makes sense. If it's not quite clear, please rewatch uh, the video up until here um, before continuing on. Let's uh, step it up a notch a bit and consider uh, an example with dividends. So imagine you buy 67 shares of Apple Incorporated at $149.04. You earn dividends of 63 cents per share for four quarters. 
and then sell your shares for $191.03 each. Uh, what is your profit and what is your return? Before we crunch the numbers, there's a fair bit of information here. So let's just uh, declutter and make sure we understand what we're working with. So we have the number of shares here, which is not really relevant to calculate the return, but it is relevant to calculate the total profit, for instance, um, because your total profit is impacted by the number of shares that you own, as well as the difference in the purchase price and selling price. So then we have the purchase price, which is $149.04. Um, and then we have information about dividends. Now, in case you're not familiar with what dividends are, dividends are just a share of the profit um, that investors can get. So when you buy shares in a company, you technically own a part of that company and that entitles you to earn this dividend, which is just a part of the profit uh, that the company can pay out for you to keep. This is just one of the rewards that you get for owning shares. So in this example, you're gonna earn a dividend of 63 cents for every share that you own. And remember you own 67 shares, so you're gonna get 67 times 63 cents uh, as your total dividends. And you're earning this uh, dividend every quarter for four quarters. So you're earning the 63 cents four times in a year, right? And then we're saying that you'll sell your shares for $191.03. So this right here is your uh, selling price. So let's uh, see how we calculate the profit. Well, the profit now would be the selling price plus the dividends, because this is the total amount of money that you're earning. And then you would subtract the purchase price, which is how much it's cost you, right? So this is the income or the money that's coming in, and this is the money that went out. So you take the uh, money that came in minus the money that went out, and that gives you your profit. Using annotations, again, can make life easier. So the profit can be expressed as PT plus one, plus div at time t plus one minus p at time t. Strictly speaking, um, the notation should be uh, more clear. So div t plus one implies that you get all of the dividends uh, at time t plus one, but in reality, that's not true, right? Because you're getting dividends every quarter. And so really you would want to have div at time t uh, plus 0 0.25, plus div at time t plus 0 0.5, and so on and so forth until you get to t plus one. But that just makes it uh, unnecessarily complicated. And so to simplify things and make life easier, I've just called it div at time t plus one. So plugging in our numbers then, pt plus one is $191.03. The dividends are 63 cents per share for four quarters. So multiply that by four and take away the purchase price of $149.04. Uh, do this and you'll get your profit. We're interested in the total profit. So you can take the profit of $44.51, which you'll get by uh, this equation right here, this line here. And then if you multiply that profit per share by the number of shares that you own, so 67 shares, you'll end up with a total profit of $2,982.17. Right, so that's how we calculate profit. Let's now look at how we calculate the return on this stock uh, when we're dealing with dividends. It's actually quite straightforward. We just change the equation for return a little bit and include this uh, dividend aspect. So now we're saying the return on the stock is the price at time t plus one plus the dividend at time t plus one minus the price at time t, all of which is divided by p at time t. Plug in our numbers, we have $191.03 for price at time t plus one the total dividends for per share, which is 63 cents per share times four quarters, because we earn this dividend every quarter for four quarters, minus the purchase price of $149.04, and divided by PT, which is $149.04. Again, as uh, before, if you were to split uh, this into three parts, or even two parts, so split it as PT plus one, plus div t uh, plus one over pt minus pt over pt, uh, then you can write it out like so. So you have $193.55 over $149.04 minus one. So this is just simplifying this equation here into something a little more uh, neat perhaps, or more manageable. How do we get the $193.55? Well, that's $191.03 plus 0.63 times four. So 0.63 times four is of course $2.52. 
add that to the $191.03 and you end up with $193.55. And then we're subtracting $149.04 divided by $149.04. And remember, anything divided by itself is always equal to one. So this one is just 149.04 divided by 149.04. And finally, when you solve for this, you'll find that the return on Apple is 29.86%. Let's just quickly look at how this equation uh, worked out, just explaining it with the annotations again. So the return is PT plus one plus div T plus one minus PT over PT. And we can rewrite this equation like this. So you've got PT plus one plus div T plus one over PT minus PT over PT. So anything divided by itself is equal to one. So the equation is simplifies to this, PT plus one plus div T plus one over PT minus one. Now that this is hopefully clear, we can come up with a general equation for the return of a stock, RJ. Importantly, if you know this equation, then you don't really need to know the previous equation that we looked at, which was right here, um, because we can just modify this new equation that we know uh, and we'll end up with a previous one anyway, right? So say for instance, you're trying to calculate the return for a stock that doesn't pay any dividends, well then the div t plus one will just be equal to zero. And so the equation will then simplify to p at time t plus one minus pt over pt, uh, because div would be equal to zero. Just a quick note, um, I know it's tempting to call the dividends D instead of div, but I would strongly encourage you to write it out as div and not D, um, because we tend to use D to refer to debt. And so as you progress on in your journey to mastering finance, uh, you'll end up using the D notation uh, a lot more frequently, and you'll use it to refer to the debt of a company and so to make your life easier and to avoid any confusion, um, I would strongly recommend that you work with div at t plus one or div as your notation for dividend uh, instead of uh, d. All right, so hopefully this makes sense. Just a quick summary then, we learned that profit is the dollar or pound that you earn from an investment, whereas the return expresses exactly the same information in percentage terms. We learned that the return on a non-dividend paying stock is calculated as PT plus one minus PT over PT, or simply PT plus one over PT minus one. And finally, we learned that uh, for a dividend paying stock, the return is PT plus one plus DIV T plus one over PT minus one. All right, hopefully all of this makes sense. If any part of this video is not clear, please rewatch it again uh, before moving on uh, any further. That's enough for me for now though. Have a go at the quiz and I'll see you in the next video.